so I'm Weston with Cussie. We're back here at the uh, project that we tore out yesterday, managed to get it all ripped out, and we have a blank slate to start with this morning. Now it's time to make it happen. So we got this next shelf for this uh, stream bed excavated out and before I ever even excavated this bed out I picked out my boulders. I know which boulders I'm putting in here on this uh, next falls. So that allowed me to get maximum amount of height and I know which boulders I have. They're 32 inches. That means I can dig down 28 inches. Have four inches of boulder up here behind this to hold back the water above it. We've been digging around in here like crazy removing an old pond. I've been jumping jacking every level. The reason I do that is because uh, this dirt is kind of soft and we got some really heavy boulders coming in here. What often will happen is if you don't do this is you build your waterfall and then over freeze and thaw a boulder will, the, the subgrade will settle and a boulder will shift a little bit and it'll crack the foam ceiling behind between the liner and the boulder and all the water goes in behind the boulder instead of over your waterfalls like you want. But anyway, we're going to prep this now, uh, chipmunk proof it with this concrete cloth right here. Going to get that all put up and then we're going to uh, flip a liner forward, lay in that wire to chipmunk proof the outside of it and then get our boulder set in. I'm squaring out these corners here. This is uh, what can make your life really hard when you're trying to build your waterfalls after the liner is in and all that, is if these corners are kind of rounded up like that, the excavation isn't clean, and uh, what will happen is you'll have your liner flipped over and you're setting your boulder, and the corner of your boulder is going down right here, and it's, this is, it's hitting this first, and it just wants to kind of tilt your boulder forward. Just makes your life 10, to, 10 million times easier just squaring these corners up really good, making sure you have a nice firm level place to sit your, your framing rock in here. I get these edges as square as possible. This as level as possible. Just makes life easier when you're strapping in these heavy boulders. I saw this thing sitting on the pallet and I uh, instantly saw what I want to use on it. This uh, flat spot right here and this kind of carved out character of the rock is perfect to use for a waterfall. So I'm going to set this boulder. I'm going to use this as the waterfall. It's got this cool little uh, rivet carved out there. It's got this uh, nice character on the back side. A lot of potential here to make a really natural looking waterfall. So I'm going to place this thing in here probably on an angle about like that. I'm going to place another boulder on the, on the, on the left side of this. That's going to make the water come back behind that boulder and then come through this and fall off this rock here. So this kind of uh, thing is what turns a waterfall into a really cool feature, is when you identify a few, a cool things like this, cool features that you can utilize and maximize their potential so that you can uh, get some really cool looking waterfalls off these boulders. That was really long winded, wasn't it? Way too technical. <laughs> I just love seeing stuff like this that I can use to build for a waterfall. We're gonna put another boulder on this side, have that water come behind it, come through here and use this flat spot to make a uh, really cool looking waterfall off this one solid rock. And these big boulders like this and using stuff like this to form your waterfalls is what makes these things look natural. So, can't wait to see how it turns out. Boom! We got these two boulders in. 
and I'll show you what I envisioned when these boards were out there on the pallets was, like I was saying, like using this flat part for the falls. This is gonna create a real crashing, gnarly boulder falls coming off down here. When I saw this undercut on this boulder, and I saw this and this flat on this boulder, I knew right away I wanted to use these two together like that. So that water's gonna come up behind here. It's gonna crash around here on the first level falls right here. It's gonna pull up and just crash down through here. So it's gonna be a pretty sick waterfall. Can't wait to see it. On a day's work, love the moss. Good morning, we're back on site here and we are swinging boulders. We are uh, got about half the stream to build, coming down the bank two more sets of falls and then we're gonna back that excavator out of here and start excavating the pond. So it's gonna be a cooker today, got lots of extra water and hoping to get this stream done and start on the pond and then tomorrow hopefully we'll plug this thing in. So stick with us. Cooker worked our way down that bank backwards, and we basically have the whole stream done. Tomorrow's the pond. Got all the edge work to do on the whole stream, and tomorrow we got this pond to knock out, hook up all the plumbing, and have water running tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, guys. We got the stream built yesterday, and it was a cooker. But uh, we're gonna try to get this pond built in today, finish up the detail work on the stream, try to get all the hard effort done before it gets too hot this afternoon. So let's go. We're dripping with sweat and uh, finally have water going into the pond. It's about 95 degrees or something like that. I think Matias actually looks worse than I do. Turn the camera on yourself once. Okay, I look bad. Look at that guy. <laughs> Crazy. We got a bunch of foam action going on here. This foam uh, is what directs the water where we want it to go. We don't want the water to come underneath this boulder and down in behind a rock. We want to direct it over here, over our waterfall right here. So that's what we do. We seal the liner to the, to the borders to the liner with the foam. This is usually way more foam than I typically use, but just the way this waterfall was constructed, I, got, I needed to make it over there. So it's kind of tough when you're working with a waterfall backwards. Normally I like the foam as we're building, but uh, being we build it backwards down the bank is a little tough to do that. So 
Got aquatics in, got lights in, got a light right here shining on this waterfall, another light shining on this waterfall. So this water's gonna come cascading down over the bank here, down over here and down over that. This is all one boulder here. Really cool, I love this overhang here. Can't wait to see how that turns out. So we got one, two, three, four, five falls, and then a eight mile island pond. We actually made it a little bit bigger so we'd have enough of water to fill this stream. So we'll see how it goes. See you in an hour. While the pond's filling, we're just doing our final edge work here. This basically consists of hiding the liner along the edge, retaining everything so that storms won't wash any debris into the pond, and making sure it's high enough so it doesn't leak when it's running. Good, good. So here we're, we got the liner, we cut it off so it's got like six inches or so plus here, and uh, we just bring it back up against the rock, make sure it's lower than the rock so we can just cover that with dirt and make sure there's still some height there so that when we mulch this, it won't wash into the pond. It'll just go up against the back of those boulders. Putting these gravel pockets here allows any water that may escape around the comb on the waterfall to have an escape down into the lower part of the stream instead of running out over the edge of the liner. And then bring a rock or our dirt right up in behind here. And a nice naturalized looking edge. Just bring mulching over top of that. All right, good morning. Weston here again. We uh, we were able to get this water feature running. It, uh, I'm really happy how it turned out. It looks really awesome. These Semco rocks are so much fun to work with. But anyway, we are now not stopping with the pond. Now we gotta enjoy it somewhere. So we're ripping out uh, some pavers that they had laid on top of the ground down here and we're installing it right. We're putting in a patio here right beside the pond's edge so they have a place to sit and enjoy it. And then we're also, uh, she decided to go ahead and landscape the area around the pond as well. So tomorrow we'll be bringing plants and mulch and we'll be finishing up this patio. So stick with us and we'll get this done too.